Good afternoon, YouTubers. Long time no speak. This has got to be my first uh, video this year. Had a bit of a problem. My uh, my laptop blew up, and uh, I've basically I've not been able to afford to replace it. Not to get one that's uh, good enough to do video processing on. And uh, my lad's just built a new desktop PC, so bless him, he gave me his old one. So we're up and running again. As you can see, I'm on another bike, a Honda Blackbird. I'll uh, talk more about that uh, in a bit. You're probably wondering why I've uh, got rid of my lovely Suzuki GSX-S1000. Well, I've basically, cut a long story short, uh, I've been teaching the grandkids how to ski at the, uh, at the snow dome in Tamworth. I've got two grandkids, Ellie and uh, Dylan, 14 and 12. And uh, it kind of backfired on me really, because they had lessons at the snow dome. Learned how to ski, and they're doing really well with it now. And uh, of course, normally I go skiing uh, probably February time, and uh, they want to come with us. Bless them. And uh, there's no way I, I couldn't afford to do it. We've uh, we'd already booked two weeks in Santi in September, so. Uh, Skiing holiday was kind of out of the question, especially with like four of us going. Anyway, so I bit the bullet, I sold the Suzuki, booked the skiing holiday, going to uh, Borovets in Bulgaria, and uh, then with what was left, I bought this baby. So, happy days really, I'm still biking and uh, get to take the grandkids skiing. The thing is, I thought, well, if I don't do it now, next year my granddaughter will be 15. You know, she could have a boyfriend. She probably won't want to come with us then. I mean, I met my wife when she was 14. So I thought, well, we'll do it now. Uh, otherwise, I probably won't get another chance. And bless them, they really want to go. And it will be fantastic. You know, they'll, they'll absolutely love it. So, up and running with a new PC, that's all I had to do was uh, get a new hard drive for it, which I've done that, so I've got something I can do my editing on now, and up and running with another bike, and she's lovely, but I do miss my Suzuki, I really do miss it, but you know, when funds allow, I will get another one, that is for sure. But uh, quick update on the Suzuki. Uh, I had it serviced in February, which was a very reasonable uh, 136 pound. And the guy says to me, "Since you look after this, don't you?" I said, "Of course, still." I said, "It's a new bike. Why wouldn't I?" He says, "We haven't had to touch it." He says, "Apart from oil and filter change." It says we haven't had to touch it because they originally quoted me 160 odd quid for the service, which I still thought was reasonable. When I went to pick it up, it says, Oh, it says 130 quid. I was like, What? They're so happy days. Did have a problem with it. The, uh, the switch on the left hand handlebar, where you cycle through the menu and select your uh, traction control. Uh, that packed up. The button in the middle, the select button, uh, stuck down. And I managed to free it off and get the button to pop back up, but it still wouldn't work. I was stuck in uh, number three, traction control, because I'd been out on it in February and the roads were quite salty. And uh, so I upped the uh, traction control. 
and uh, the next time I rode it the uh, the roads were a lot clearer so I put it back onto number one but I've come to just it so uh, I went down to Clive Castle Dines which is our local Suzuki dealer it's only about three miles away from where I live and uh, it, yeah no problem we all order you a new switch he says it's funny he says that's the second one we've had this week they had exactly the same thing on a uh, on a 750 anyway he ordered me my new switch rang me when he got it in and uh, I went down and they fitted it for me but the new switch was uh, a different part number so uh, obviously they've now modified the switch but uh, apart from that always always good you know <coughs> excuse me I had that bike from new I did uh, nearly 4,000 miles on it when it went and I never adjusted the chain not once I don't know whether it was adjusted on its first service or not I don't think it was because it didn't need doing and uh, I just kept it lube with the as I spoke about before the uh, the dry lube and uh, fantastic but uh, yes I did love that bike but uh, I will have another one when uh, as I say when funds allow but uh, yes so uh, <coughs> I sold the bike bought the skiing <coughs> excuse me had a bit of money left over so uh, with what I've got left uh, I bought the Blackbird I'll stop in a bit and uh, I'll do a bit of a walk around and, and, and show you what's what but uh, she's lovely do like it very different to the Suzuki it's a lot more sort of old school but uh, beautiful machine Yes, so uh, as I was saying, the uh, the Blackbird, she's a 2000 model, it's the XXY, uh, 18 years old, uh, She's well she's done just over 31,000 now, when I had it, it's done about 29 and a half thousand, uh, every single MOT, right from when it did its first MOT, uh, full Honda service history with all the receipts it's absolutely sweet credit to Honda really I mean they do build a quality bike engine is lovely really uh, really smooth not entirely sure about the gear change especially after the Suzuki which was like a micro switch this a uh, little bit heavier gear change and you've got to be quite precise with it as it can be uh, quite clunky but I think that's just going back to 2000 it's uh, the gearboxes were a little bit more notchy then but uh, yeah certainly very happy with it very happy Let's see if we can get by the van and the car engine feels so laid back compared to the Suzuki I mean that thing was mad as a box of frogs and that was something I did love about it it was so responsive but uh, this is a bit more old school which is a lot higher geared so you don't get that crack in top gear like you get with the Suzuki because for any given road speed she's revving a lot lower uh, I mean for example the Suzuki in top gear, 6th gear, at 60 mile an hour was doing 4,000 revs. This in top gear, in 6, at 4,000 is doing 75. It still pulls, still pulls well, but sometimes, you know, for like your optimum acceleration for overtaking, you probably need a, a downshift. I mean, you drop it down into 4th and it really does go there a lot of power at the top end there's power everywhere it, uh, it pulls right off the bottom 
and then uh, from about 7,000 she uh, she really lifts the skirt up and goes. Yeah, that is yeah, 4,000 revs, 75 mile an hour. You feel like you can get off and run faster. It's so so laid back. You, you just you, you don't feel like you're doing 75 mile an hour. It's an absolute distance gobbler. I've been to the coast on it and one or two other places, fairly decent runs and it absolutely destroys the miles. I did have one of these. Um, oh blimey. Uh, about 13 years ago I had the very first fuel injected one. That was the uh, I think it was an XXX. And uh, I remember when I had the bike, I mean it was a low miler. The, the, the guy had had it, he hadn't even finished running it in. And uh, I think he was a bit too heavy for him and one thing and another. He got a lot of points on his license. And uh, he sold it on eBay and the listing finished about half past eight on a Sunday morning which is a pretty bad time to have a, last, a listing finishing and uh, so I deliberately got up early on the, the Sunday morning and uh, I got the bike for about two and a half thousand quid and it had only done, I think when I bought it, it done about 700 miles but uh, it it awesome, I loved the bike but uh, at the time I was riding sort of a lot of sports bikes and I had a ZZR 1100, Kawasaki ZZR 1100 but I used the Touring and I had sports bikes as well and uh, I was a little bit, I don't know why I can't put my finger on it but I was a little bit disappointed with the Blackbird, it just felt a little bit flat um, handled fantastic. I mean, for, for a big bike, they're heavy and they handle absolutely amazing. Good brakes. Um, but I bought some luggage for it. I got a jiffy, uh, a jiffy rack and we put the panniers on and a top box and me and the wife packed up and we went all over Cornwall and Devon on it. And that kind of changed my mind about the bike. It was fantastic. Two up didn't need to adjust the suspension, just left it as it was and uh, it was great, good brakes, fuel consumption wasn't as good as like some of the big Kawasaki 4s, uh, 44 to the gallon which is what I'm getting on this, probably get a little bit more um, you know if I go touring on it but at the minute it's doing sort of 43, 44 to the gallon. But uh, yeah, I bought this one and I don't know why, this just feels quicker than what I remember. Whether it's me just getting older now. But it definitely feels quicker than I remember. But like I say, for a bike with 30,000 miles on it, it handles fantastic. The suspension is just pure quality. I mean, it's non-adjustable non on the front. You've got no adjustment. The back, you've got preload on the spring um, and rebound adjustment for the damping. Whoops, foot slipping off, foot rest. Um, th that's it. But to be honest with you, I've not touched it. <laughs> Don't need to. It's uh, it's lovely. It feels very plush after riding the Suzuki because the Suzuki was uh, that they're quite firm but it's all par and parcel with the bike, you know, firm suspension and bonkers engine. It did make it a fun bike. But say so this is, a, you know, a different thing altogether. I'm gonna get a uh, top box for it. Uh, Kappa do a, a rack and a 56 litre, I think it is, top box for 235 quid. So uh, I've booked to go down to Devon in the first week of October. So uh, 
I shall get the uh, rack and top box, so I've got a bit of storage space, ready for my trip. Beautiful day, absolutely cracking. I reckon it'll be uh, about 30 degrees C later. It was about 26, 27 when I came out. It hit 30 yesterday. For a heavy bike, it, it, you don't you don't feel the weight when you're riding. Any time it makes its weight felt, it's when you got to say you've gone into a right hander, then you've got to quickly f pick the bike up and tip it into a left hander. It will make its weight felt a little bit then. But uh, I was just blown away by the handling. Superb. It came all fully serviced, but I'll probably, before I go away in October, I'll um, get some proper gear on, mate. Not a bunch of skin left on them knees if you come off. Even at 20 mile an hour. That's it, just keep coming through, tithead. Yes, yeah, so I've been looking through weighing up the pros and cons oil-wise. I thought, what I'm trying to find an oil that would uh, probably just improve the gear change a little bit. I don't know whether when they serviced it they put a fully synthetic in. But uh, I remember going back to the day when I had a ZR 1100. And if I used synthetic in that, the gear change was horrible. Yeah, I put a good quality mineral oil in and the gear change was superb. So uh, I'm wondering what to do with this. I might go Motul um, semi-synthetic before I go away. Fresh filter. And if the funds will allow it, I'll probably put some uh, new brake pads in as well. The genuine Honda ones are £115 for a full set, that's uh, both your fronts and the back, which I might go with, I might stick with the Honda pads. It's got the link braking system on it, which uh, I don't know, I'm kind of mixed feelings about that. Sometimes I think it's a good thing and other times, you know, um, I just like sometimes when you're out on the bike and you, you just need a, a bite on the brakes and you, you know, a couple of fingers on the front brake and bump, it, it scrubs the speed off and you kind of feel as though I've not got that with this, you, you, you need to uh, dip the back brake as well. But the pads on it look, they're not, they're not sort of past the best but they're quite thin. So I might try a fresh set of pads and uh, See if it uh, improves things a bit. Don't get me wrong, the brakes are not bad, the brakes are really good. But uh, I say I'm just not 100% sure on the on the link brake. I suppose from a safety point of view, if you're on wet, you know, greasy roads, it's uh, a good thing.
nobody can see, but the fuel gauge is down on the empty mark. But the fuel gauge seems to go down quite quick and then it'll sit on empty for ages. And even when the red light comes on, I can go and fill it up and uh, I'll probably only get 17 litres in and it's a 24 litre tank. So you've still got, what, about 7 litres left in there, so it's got a huge reserve on it. It panicked me a bit when I first had it because I kept thinking, is the fuel light working at all? I was worried I was going to run out, but uh, it, it does work. But it uh, takes a long time before that light will come on. Right, we'll whiz up round the back here. And we'll do a bit of a walk round on the bike. Sound nice. Right, there she is. X registered, say 2000. Lovely sounding. All completely bog standard. So beautiful condition for its year. Uh, it's just uh, credit to Honda quality. I think the wheels have been resprayed at some point. I mean, it's a good job, they made a nice job of them. But, uh, I think they've been re-sprayed. Maybe the fork legs have been re-sprayed as well. Because I know that was a weakness on them. They used to flake. But apart from that, it's lovely. They even got the original screen on it. There's a couple of little marks here and there, but I mean, it's an 18 year old bike with 30,000 on it. Got new chain sprockets. A couple of little. I don't know whether you see whether the camera's picking it up, but there's a a little tiny crack there. It's nothing really. A little scratch on the front wood guard. But apart from that, and a little tiny mark on the tank somewhere. But, you know, I'm being really picky there where the camera's picking it up. But that's it. It's got heated grips, which work very nice, but obviously I don't need them this weather. Oxford heated grips. Um, when I had the bike, the tyres on it, it's got Michelins, so they're the old Michelins. And I uh, can't remember what, which ones they were, but they've got plenty of meat on them and uh, it handled really well, it, it gripped really well, you know, I was quite happy with it. But I found at higher speeds I was getting a little bit of vibration, a bit of shake on the front. It just sort of, you know, the mirrors would wobble, the screen was wobbling about, even the clocks. And I thought, I've, I've got a wheel out of balance. And I looked at the wheels and there was no weights on them at all. I think obviously they, when they'd been re-sprayed, they hadn't bothered balancing them back up again. So I went to performance uh, bike tyres, uh, RNS bike tyres rather, it used to be performance bike tyres, RNS. Uh, Rob and Sandy, not far away from me, always look after me with my tyres. And um, I took it to him and I said, Rob, I says, can you balance my wheels up? And he says, well, it's going to cost you, I think it was 34 quid in end, because he'd got to take the wheels out. He says, uh, it's not worth it. He says, wait till you have new tyres. And he says, you know, what's the problem? And I told him. And he came outside and looked at the bike. And he went, oh my God. 
it says them tyres are old. I says, well, I thought they were. I says, but how old are they? And he looked, and it says, they're 14 years old. It says, don't bother. It says, have a new set of tyres. It says, whatever you do, it says, if you're going to ride it, it says, don't ride it in the wet. So it kind of bothered me a bit then. So I had a new set of um, Michelin, Michelin uh, Pilot Road 4s, and they are utterly amazing. They're fantastic. They're the best tyres I have ever had full stop on any bike. The turning is lovely. Uh, they're not noisy on the road, but the grip is just phenomenal. The grip just goes on and on and on, especially this weather. Grip is incredible. So uh, I've been really, pr really pleased with those. Uh, they suit the bike fantastic. Anyway, I'm going to pop over the road to McDonald's and go and get a coffee, as I usually do. And uh, I shall talk to you in a bit. Try for now. have just had the nicest iced frappe, Belgian chocolate and honeycomb. Just the job on a day like today. Beautiful. Anyway, going back to the uh, the tyres, new tyres fitted, and uh, she's smooth, smooth as anything now. No, uh, no vibration from the front end, no shakes. But I was shocked when he said how old the tyres were. Because apparently, uh, Rob was telling me that um, on your MOT, uh, if your tyres are older than 10 years, they can uh, they can fail it. My word, somebody's on a go slow. Thank you. Fantastic day again. This weather just seems to be going on and on. About 27 degrees C now. Nice to get moving again. I was getting a bit warm. Last time I remember weather like this, day in and day out, was uh, the summer of 1976. For those of you old enough to remember. I think if I remember right, we had snow in the June, believe it or not. And then it just, we just had two months of, of this, which is pretty much what we're getting now. I mean, it's gotta be two months now. I think this weather started uh, about the end of May. <coughs> And we're pushing on now to the towards the end of July. It's fantastic. I 
I know there's a lot of places already got uh, got hose pipe bands. That's fantastic. Just blocked the road for me. Fantastic bit of driving. What the f Oh my giddy aunt, have a word with your driving. I think she stalled it across the junction. She's definitely stalled it across the junction. Yeah, when I took the bike into uh, Rob's for its new tyres, he was looking round it. He says, how many miles has it done? I says, 30,000. He says, oh, he says, just an arse you run in. <clears throat> and it made me wonder whether that's why this one feels faster than the one I had uh, previously, all those years ago. Whether as the miles roll on, the engine gets, you know, more gets better bedded in and uh, you know so your performance comes up Set the country lanes back. The left here. Bit bright. Set the old sun visor down. <laughs> I've got to get set up with my uh, my other. I've got a GoPro uh, Hero 4 session, the little box one. So I've just got to find somewhere on the bike to mount that, makes the videos a bit more interesting when you can have a second view. I'll probably mount it on top of the screen just here, looking back, so you can see my ugly mush. Is a, a strange thing. Not me. Um, this is the only bike I've ever had where I've not felt the need for a gear indicator. All my previous bikes, where I could, I fitted a gear indicator. But this one, you just always seem to know what gear you're in, which is kind of strange. I just don't feel the need for a gear indicator on this. And I do like a gear indicator. Even if you don't feel that you really need it, it's just nice just to glance down. Oh yeah, I'm in fourth, fifth or whatever. There's a corner here and it really does show up your bike suspension. This bend here, it's got a real dip right in the middle. And the bird there. And you barely feel it. The bird just soaks it up as though it's nothing. Seven mile an hour, at about 3,700 revs. And you feel like you're doing about 40. So relaxed. I think the pads that are in this bike are quite hard. Because I find uh, when I leave my house, the first grab of the brakes, there's 
not a lot of bites and as soon as they've warmed up the bites there but this weather how hot it is the brakes just seem better than ever a lovely burble Yeah, so the grandkids are well excited, looking forward to skiing in uh, February and so am I, I didn't go last year so uh, I'm well up for a bit of skiing again Bless them <coughs> After I booked it, I printed out all the documents and they were staying with us for a couple of days and uh, I just handed them the paperwork that I'd, I'd printed out and uh, it's got our names on it they said got our names on it are we going it's like yep and oh bless them they're that excited oh that's interesting we've got a closed road oh well see if we can get lost down here then Yeah, I say, it, it meant, uh, you know, I sold my Suzuki and I was absolutely gutted to see it go. But, you know, I'm still riding. Got a, still got a decent bike, brilliant bike. But that is not the end of the story, folks, as far as Suzuki goes. I'm in no rush to get rid of this. But uh, when finances allow it, I will be back on a Suzuki. I sold the bike, because you're probably wondering, uh, I sold it to the Superbike factory. I got an idea in my head what the bike was worth, I'd been on the internet to find out, you know, the values. I mean, I got a bargain when I, when I bought it, I only paid seven and a half grand for it, and that was brand new. And uh, so I had a figure in mind of six, if I sold it privately and uh, while I was online this superbike factory popped up and you just put all the put your details in bike details in and they give you a call and make you an offer so I thought well that couldn't be easier so I thought I'll do it so I thought I'll, you know whatever offer they make if I don't you know if it's not acceptable then that's as far as it goes and anyway, I got a call the next day and uh, he asked me all about the bike, what condition it was in, and I says, well, it, you know, it's mint. It's absolutely still new, because there wasn't a mark on it, not even a stone chip. And uh, so he arranged to come and view the bike, and uh, he said, if it's as good as what you say it is, he says, we'll give you six grand for it. And I thought, happy days, that's what I wanted. And uh, he came, I spent three quarters of an hour going round the bike, ran it up, checked engine numbers, frame numbers, everything. He really did go through the bike, at which he said the bike was a credit to me, which was very nice. And uh, it was a quick phone call and the money was in my bank. It was as easy as that. So I would highly recommend Superbike Factory. Fantastic. He loaded the bike up into his uh, into his van, and uh, job done. He went away, and I got the money in the bank. But this is the bike you can do some serious miles on. It's a little bit more lean forward than I would have liked. I've got used to it now. But getting on this after the Suzuki, it felt like an out and out sports bike. Even though the clip-ons are mounted, as you can see, on on uh, on top of the yokes. They're not underneath the yokes, but it, it still felt quite a stretch to the bars. But uh, I have got used to it now. And the bike is very comfortable. A bit, if you're going any sort of distance, you need to be cruising at, you know, 
not high speeds, but uh, you can't be plodding along like this because it does start to hurt on the wrist after a while. I went to the coast, I went to uh, Hunstanton, had a day out. Right there, fantastic. But coming back, it was an absolute flipping nightmare. Traffic, there was a lorry broken down and there were miles of tailbacks. I mean, luckily I could just filter straight through. But of course, it knocks your speed right back and uh, the old wrist and hands were starting to ache a bit. Once I got clear of all the traffic and got motoring, you know, it all went away. Yeah, after what I said about the brakes, that front brake is really biting now. I think it must have hurt me. But I think it's definitely down to the warmer weather. And it's certainly got hard pads in it. I'll go left here and get back onto the uh, country roads. I'm not going down through uh, the town. Oh, stop, go, stop, go. It's too hot sitting in traffic. Boiling in my leathers, like boiling the bag. Oh, quick shout out to, um, I think it was Mark. Mark, I'm, I'm really sorry if I've got your name wrong, but I had a, a Benelli uh, 252C and uh, Mark bought it off me. And I said I'd give him a shout out on my next video, although that was months and months ago because I haven't done anything. <laughs> so Mark, I'm sorry if I've got your name wrong, I, I really apologise, it was a while ago. But uh, the guy that bought my old Benelli, if you're watching this, uh, just drop me a message. Just let me know how you're getting on with it. I'd be interested to know. Lovely little bike that was. But I sold it because the engine was about to blow up. Ah no, not really, Mark. I'm just kidding. Just kidding.